This problem's gonna be for you folks to try. It's number 55 from the assigned homework. So you are getting a jump start on the homework by working through this as we go through the videos together. Before I have you pause the video to work on it, just wanna talk a little bit about strategy. So first of all, I noticed that I have two different trig functions, tangent and secant. And they're not connected by multiplication, so there's no way I'm gonna be able to break them up into distinct factors. So I'm gonna to need to use some trig identities to try to rewrite this in terms of one trig function, okay? And with tangent and secant, I don't have a way of going from tangent to secant or vice versa, but I do have a Pythagorean identity that will allow me to go from tangent squareds to secant squareds or vice versa. So this is another one where I'm gonna to wanna to square both sides so that I can take advantage of that Pythagorean identity. When I do that, that means I'm gonna to have to check because it's possible that some angles will be solutions to the squared equation, but not to this original equation. But here I also, I'm working with an angle other than X. So that makes the process a little bit longer. So I wanna just talk a little bit about when we should do our checking. So if my angle is 2X, I'm first of all gonna find 2X in one period, and that's gonna be from zero to two pi. Now, I know I'm gonna to try to rewrite this in terms of one trig function. Not sure yet whether that's gonna end up being tangent or secant, okay? And so you might say, well, should I hold off? And if I rewrite it in terms of tangent, then one period would be from zero to pi. The answer is no, okay? Because the original equation has both tangents and secants in it, okay? And so I wanna go with two pi that way, over an interval of length 2 pi, and here we're talking about 2x being in that interval, this will do it things, its thing once, this will do its thing twice, but both of them will repeat values over every interval of length 2 pi. Only this side repeats its values over inter every interval of length pi. Okay. So if I have two functions with, a, with different periods, that's always going to mean one period is pi and one period is 2 pi. I want to go with 2 pi. All right. Then I would find all 2x, then I would find all x, which I do by just dividing by 2, and then I figure out which of those x values are in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, because that's part of the directions to solve in that interval. Okay. So where do I check my answers? Well, I'm allowed to check them at any step that I want to. But I would suggest you check as early as possible, so check answers here. Now the reason for that is because if I keep a solution here, I'm going to have to go through these other three steps. I'm going to have to add a multiple of 2 pi, divide by 2, and then check which of those are going to be in this interval. Okay. But if I have a potential answer here that doesn't check, I get rid of it, I don't have to do these next three steps. So strategic laziness says check as early as possible that way, if you eliminate anything, you don't have to do any further work with that. Okay. If you don't remember to check here and you work all the way through, as long as you've checked your final answers that you're going to turn in, you're fine. But if you check your answers here, everything that's an answer here, if you add a multiple of 2 pi, will be an answer. And then if you solve for the corresponding x values, that will be a solution. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Try this one. Have fun. Okay, so we're gonna square both sides. So we're gonna have tangent of 2x plus one squared equals secant of 2x squared. Now remember on this left side, that means I have two factors of tangent of 2x plus one. Over here, that's just gonna give me secant squared of 2x. In our last example, we had a coefficient in front of the trig function, that also got squared. Squaring will never change the angle that we're plugging in. We are squaring secant. We are not squaring the angle. Okay, let's FOIL out this left-hand side. That's going to be tangent squared 2x plus two copies of tangent 2x plus 1 equals secant squared 2x. Now, in our last example, we replaced the tangents with secant. Here I'm going to do the other. I'm going to change the secants to tangents. That's because 
I've got some just plain tangents that aren't squared. I don't have a way of writing those in terms of secant. But if I look, all of my secants are squared, and my Pythagorean identity will allow me to convert those to tangent squared. So if you remember the version of the Pythagorean identity that gives you a relationship between secant and tangent, great. If not, we'll go back to our basic one. Sine squared. I'm going to just write this in terms of the angle 2x so that I don't forget that's the angle that I'm working with. Totally fine to write the identity in terms of x or theta and then just plug in the angle that you're working with. Okay. Sine squared 2x plus cosine squared 2x equals 1. Divide through by cosine squared 2x. And so I get tangent squared of 2x plus 1 equals secant squared of 2x. So I'm going to just replace this secant squared with tan squared plus 1. So we'll have tan squared of 2x plus 2 tangent of 2x plus 1 equals tangent squared of 2x plus 1. All right. So that's a quadratic, so I'm going to move everything over to one side, set it equal to 0. And this is awfully nice, because when I subtract over that tangent squared 2x, it cancels from both sides. So now I'm left with something that's linear in terms of tangent. I like that. It's even nicer, because those 1s cancel as well. So we've got just 2 tangent of 2x is equal to 0. Divide both sides by that 2 in front. So tangent of 2x is equal to 0. All right, excellent. So now let's list the answers that we get between 0 and 2 pi. Now that may feel a little bit weird. Usually when I'm working with tangent, I just work with one period of tangent. But remember, the original equation dealt with tangents and secants. So I've got to work with the interval over which both of those functions will repeat a value, their values, or repeat their pattern. Okay, so two x in zero to two pi. Now I'm writing it here because I'm going to check these and only write it here if they check. Okay. But what's the solution to this? Well, there are two places on the unit circle where tangent would be 0, and that would correspond to 0 and pi. Also corresponds to 2 pi, but that's not in this interval. We're not including that because we're ultimately going to add a multiple of 2 pi to all of these answers. So if 0 is a solution, when I add 2 pi to it, I'll get 2 pi anyway. Okay. All right, so let's check at this point. So if 2x is equal to 0, now do be careful here. These are values of 2x. With 0, it doesn't make much difference, because if I double 0, I'm still going to have 0. But with pi, it does. I'm not plugging in pi for x. If I were, I'd have to double it to get 2 pi. I'm plugging in pi for 2x. Let's write that. So I'm going to check both of those. So tangent of 2x plus 1 and secant of 2x. So this would be tangent of 0 plus 1. That's 0 plus 1. That's 1. Secant of 2x, that's going to be secant of 0. That's the reciprocal of cosine of 0, so it's the reciprocal of 1, which is 1, and that checks. Okay, so I'm going to list that over here. That is, in fact, a solution. Okay, so now let's check if 2x is equal to pi. Okay, so tangent of 2x plus 1 and secant of 2x. So that would be tangent of pi plus 1. Again, I'm plugging this in for 2x, not for x, so I'm not doubling it. Okay. Tangent of pi is 0, plus 1 would be 1. Secant of 2x would be secant of pi. That's the reciprocal of cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. 
that does not check. That's an extraneous solution. So the only solution that I have here for what 2x could be between 0 and 2 pi is 0. Okay. So if that's the only solution, that's the only one that I'm going to continue to work with to figure out what my x values could be. Okay. So then all values of 2x would be 0 plus 2 pi n. Again, I'm not adding a multiple of the period of tangent, even though I've rewritten this in terms of tangent, because this equation involves secants as well. And the secants only cycle through one complete cycle over an interval of length 2 pi. So I'm working with the period that applies to the entire equation. All right, so then basically, this is saying that 2x is 2 pi n. Let's solve for x. x would be pi n. Oh my goodness, and I forgot to write that n is an integer. I should remember to do that. Okay. So all x would be pi times n, where n is an integer. So it's just multiples of pi. And now we want all the multiples of pi in this interval. And I suppose I could create my usual table of values, although I can probably do this one by inspection. If n is 0, I'm getting 0. If n is 1, I'm getting pi. If n were 2, I would get 2 pi, but that's too big, because we're not including 2 pi. Okay. So this would just be 0 and pi. Excellent. So these two parts answer parts A and B. This is my answer to A. That's my answer to B.